Hello everyone, this is the third lesson of the Rust Crash Course. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about Rust data types. Okay, so if you don't know it already, Rust is a statically typed language, which means that all types must be known at compile times. Now, compared to other languages such as Java, for example, you don't have to explicitly tell all the types by yourself because the compiler is smart enough in many cases to infer the type automatically, such as in this case, from the project of the previous video, we can see that the compiler doesn't require you to write the type. In this case, it infers that it is an integer i32. Okay. Now there are times as we've seen in which the type is needed, for example, when uh, parsing a string, for example, five dot parse, unwrap. Okay, in this case, if I try to compile it, the compiler will complain because it cannot infer the correct type. Now, if I now specify a type with a colon and then the type itself, the program will compile without any problem. Okay, in Rust, there are two categories of types. There are scalar types and compound types. So the former includes uh, integers, booleans, uh, floating point numbers and chars. And we are going to talk about this first. So we already seen uh, the basic integer types, which is i32. But uh, there are other types of integer. As you can see from the official documentation, integer types are divided into two categories, both signed and unsigned. And if you don't know it already, unsigned means that you can't have negative numbers, whereas uh, inside that you can. And uh, the, the other difference is the size of these types. And if you want a bit of comparison, I64 is equivalent to long, for example, in Java, I16 is uh, a short, U8 is a byte in Java, and so on. So we can now start using some of these integer types. Uh, for example, we already seen that this five is an i32. But I can say that this type is a u32. Okay, and this the program will compile without problems. But if I now try to assign that type to another variable, for example, world, which is an i32, goes to hello, the compiler will complain because in Rust, uh, there is no implicit conversion between types. So we have to cast the type and we do so with the as keyword. So as i32 and it works without problems. In fact, this cast uh, allows the compiler to automatically infer the type. So we don't have to explicitly specify i32 another time. And that was really all I wanted to say about integers. The next type is floating point numbers. And if you come from other type languages, you already seen float and double. In Rust, there is no double in the sense that you don't write double. What you do, again, is writing, for example, hello is equal to, for example, 1.0, which is typed automatically as an F64, which is totally equivalent to double in other languages. In fact, double means double precision, because we both have f64, which is double and f32, which is equivalent to a float. Okay, of course, in Rust, there are all the numeric operations you would expect from a programming language, for example, so if we have a variable result, and the result is given by hello, plus uh, two. And we print result, what we see is three, indeed. And there is another important thing to consider is that as I said before, there is no implicit conversion between types. So if I try to sum the two previous variables, which are hello and word and try to compile it, I'm going to get an error because those are two different data types. So again, I need to explicitly specify a type, what you could do is both uh, promoting the f32 to f 64, such as s f 64. Okay, so this works as expected, or you could demote f 64 to f 32. But of course, in this case, you could have a loss of precision. So 
when designing a program, you should always try to use the highest available precision in normal circumstances. Another very important type is the Boolean type, which is which as all other languages can be either true or false. And again, the explicit type is bool, but you don't have to explicitly specify it. Our last scalar uh, data type is the char type. So the char type can be created with the single quotes, for example, in this case, and if I try to print it, of course, it will work as expected. The explicit type is char. One thing to consider compared to other languages is that the char type is not uh, an 8 bit ASCII code. Okay. In fact, it is a four byte value that uh, correspond to the Unicode scalar value of that char. So it is much more complex than a normal ASCII char. And uh, we're going to talk about this much better when talking about strings that in Rust are not super trivial. And uh, but, but that's really it for scalar types, then there are compound types. And uh, the first one is the tuple type. If you come from other languages such as Golang or Python, you will be already familiar with tuples. And the way you create it is by simply specifying them with parentheses such as five, 2.0 and uh, T. Okay. So in this case, what it does is telling me that it cannot print basically the tuple. Okay, you will see this error quite often when printing custom or more complex types. And a quick way to solve this problem is by using the debug print. So in this case, this is the standard display print. Okay, but if you inside the brackets specify colon and then a question mark, then you're specifying a debug print, which is usually automatically provided by Rust. And as you can see, it correctly prints the tuple. Another thing that is similar to other languages is uh, the so called destructuring of tuples. So for example, I can say let x, y and z equals to hello. And in this case, the compiler just destructures the tuple in three individual variables. So if I now try to print y, I'm going to see hello to, okay, as you can see, this is particularly useful when returning a tuple from a function, it is a way to return multiple values from a function. And in this case, we can easily and very conveniently get indiv the individual values. Okay, finally, there is the array type in which we, we can specify it with the square brackets. So for example, one, two, three, four, five. And if I now try to print it, hello. As you can see, it prints it correctly, the compiler here automatically inferred the type which is i32. If we want to explicitly specify the type of an array in Rust, what we do is specifying first the type so i32, and then semicolon and then the size of the array it has this one. Okay, as you can see, it compiles correctly. So arrays are fixed length structures. So they're not uh, suited for sequences that change length. In that case, you will need a vector, which is basically a list. And we're going to talk about it in one of the later videos. But for now, you just need to know that arrays are used to store fixed length sequences, we could try to access an individual element such as the first one, we'll see that it prints hello one because we accessed the first element. And of course, if we try to access an element which is not in the array, the compiler automatically inferred that this is going to crash at runtime. But uh, we're going to trick it a bit. So I'm going to use another variable index equals to 10, then assign it here index. And in this case, the check the automatic compile time check cannot be done because it is a variable, he cannot know what the variable value will be when calling this function. So we'll compile correctly, but then fresh at runtime. Okay, so it panicked. When a Rust program crashes at runtime, it panics. Okay, 
And then we have the panic error. So indeed, it's pretty much like every high level language such as Python, Java, Golang, that tells you when you go out of bounds with an array. With other low level languages such as C or C++, you don't usually have this check and very bad thing could happen when you go outside array bounds, but for us that you are particularly safe in this case. That was really all for this video. I really hope it was helpful to you. If you didn't understand something, please write a comment below and uh, we'll see in the next video.